Good afternoon. My name is Vince Carr and I am counselor for education for the American Guild of Organists. I'd like to welcome you to this second in our series of six webinars around the topic of organ teaching. I'm indebted to my predecessor, Don Cook, for all of his work in assembling the presenters and topics over the last several months. How nice it is to be able to come together in this way, even though we might feel far apart. These webinars represent part of the programming for this year's Committee on Continuing Professional Education, which is led by its director, Frank Crozio. The committee works to provide valuable educational opportunities for our members, and we felt that there was a tremendous need for online programming this year, most especially. We continue today with a presentation on the AGO Achievement Awards by Jonathan Hall. Our presentation will last around 40 minutes and will be followed by a question and answer session. You may submit your question by accessing the Q&A box, which is at the bottom of your Zoom screen to the right of center. We will try our best to answer all questions. However, those questions we cannot answer live due to time constraints will be answered by the presenter following the webinar. Without further ado, I now turn the screen over to Jonathan Hall. Good afternoon, everyone, <clears throat> and thank you for being here today, and a big thank you to the American Guild of Organists for organizing, as it were, this series. I'm going to switch in and out of screen sharing as we go, so I'm not simply a disembodied voice the entire time. But first, if I can make this work correctly, oh, here we go, I'd like to tell you about the night I discovered the Big Dipper. I had grown up in New York City and seldom seen the stars. But then we moved to a house on Long Island just before Thanksgiving one year. And early that same December, I went outdoors after dinner to watch my father and my brother throw the football around. And I looked towards the north and lo and behold, right on schedule, there was the Big Dipper. To quote John Keats, then felt I like some watcher of the skies when a new planet swims into his ken. Of course, I hadn't discovered the Big Dipper at all. And yet I had, I had discovered it for myself. And while my father and brother continued to throw the football, I marveled at the heavens and turned my eyes towards other stars in the sky. That was about four months after Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. Both events remain engraved in my memory and somehow fused together and both have changed my life. As G.K. Chesterton said of himself, I am the man who with the utmost daring discovered what had been discovered before. As a late starter in the organ, I have had my share of discovering to catch up on as well. Perhaps that's a good way to wish you all a happy Columbus Day the patron saint of discovering the already discovered. But of course, I want to talk about the Achievement Awards, a new guild initiative to stimulate and reward learning from the earliest stages of just beginning to approach the organ. We are in the business of helping new organists or those who wish to improve, the young but not only the young, discover what we have discovered. It's in that spirit that I undertook the conception and development to this point of the Achievement Awards. Uh, before I go any further, I would like to mention the educational and certification structure of the Guild. Vince just did that a little bit, but I think this should be a feature of every presentation. Uh, no one should present on a certification or an award or anything the Guild without mentioning the whole structure in the interest of transparency. So I'd like to do that right now. Let me go to my website, which is where? I have a website here somewhere, I know I do. Ah, here it is. Let me go over to the Guild, American Guild of Organists. 
So the Committee on Professional Certification, which is under the Education tab, goes down to Certification. This committee is headed by Dr. Andre Lash, and that's down at the bottom of this page, the names of our participants who create the exams and grade them every year. This certification page is your go-to page for all of those things. There is a link to the Achievement Award program as well. Before I go into that though, the committee itself is a committee in the portfolio of the Counselor for Education, who you just heard from, Vincent Carr, and here are the other committees. So it's very important to know where we stand and who's doing what. Um, never feel that you can't fight City Hall. I don't believe there is any City Hall you have to fight. I think we're all in this together. So let that be, let that be a feature from now on, whenever we do a workshop on certification or awards. I'd like to go back to my PowerPoint now and show you that. Go back to, go to here and go down. I've shown you this again, where we find certification on the web page. I know the website's a little complicated, a little bit busy with thick menus, but it can be done. You can find these things. There we are. All different ways to find the people you need to be in touch with. <clears throat> now, what are the Achievement Awards? They're designed to provide a ladder upwards towards certification or just towards greater knowledge and enjoyment of the instrument. They can be just loved and enjoyed in their own right as learning opportunities. As I said at the Organ Fest over the summer, rather than throwing another ladder down from the great helicopter, I'm building a stairway from the ground upwards. So we want basic beginning tests that will build confidence and knowledge. Put the guild's name before the new organist or the learning organist. Put our name before that person in a positive way all the time. Make these tests short and achievable. And the menu of tests is intended to grow over time. Now the Achievement Awards, unlike the big five that we have now, service playing, colleague, associate, fellow, choir master, which are judged either by the Board of Examiners or the committee, these Achievement Awards are chapter owned and operated. The chapter manages the awards. I intended to give chapters a ready-to-go educational program that could be put right in the hands of a member, new member especially, but any member, something that can be worked and done. So you get on board and start learning. If they don't need it, that's fine. Maybe they can jump into one of the classic uh, certification exams, uh, or they don't feel like it, but it's there and it's available, and it's right in the quiver as it were, of, of the guild leadership. I would like to cultivate trust and leadership and advocacy, uh, that we can take our work to each other, that we can step up and take roles of mentoring. So the trust and leadership is in, it involves the candidate and the mentor, of course, advocacy for the organ. It's up to us. The guild um, used to have more members than it does now. And we would like to build it again and make our case for this marvelous instrument with a new audience. I think there's a lot of goodwill to be cultivated out there, a lot of culture that's very much on our side and we can build with that. And of course, the idea is also to build inclusive and welcoming chapters, a great guild experience for everyone. Uh, it's um, not fair that we're seen as elite or elitist uh, but the perception is as important as the reality. And we might not be 100% innocent in any case. So this is a great way to counter that with something that's broad and friendly and kindly. So these exams are not directly managed by national. Uh, they are for beginners of any age or anyone who just would like to take them or learn or explore or develop. Now, many awards in other organizations, some of which I will cite shortly, are given strictly at the discretion of the local club or chapter and can be signed off on by any number of local officers. There's a lot of precedent in other groups for local ownership of some of the advancement program. 
in my thinking, you know, I have been guided by the work of other successful organizations. I've alluded to this before. I'll, I'll say some of, some of it again today. But more importantly, again, this program is ready to go right now. I would hope that chapter leaders would engage it, deploy it, put it on their websites, recruit mentors, and wield the idea of achievement awards as a way of growing our community and building love for the King of Instruments. Instead of elitism, we need to offer excellence. In place of, of that old bane of human existence, envy, we need to replace it with emulation. If you see someone who has something, well, you can get it for yourself too. In place of pride, there should be self-respect. In lieu of competition all the time, we can share the journey. <clears throat> I, if my credentials mean anything, they are more for the future than for the past. Otherwise, they're just beautiful yellow documents on the wall getting yellower by the day. They have to mean something for the future. So the next screen would have to do with the mentor. The mentor system is intended to help with all of this as well. A mentor works with the candidate on the award. Uh, the person does not have to have degrees or certifications, although that's certainly possible and it's certainly wonderful. I'm very much in favor, but it's not necessarily required, at least according to the current regulations. Now, one chapter dean who may be joining us in a little while asked me yesterday if the teacher can be the mentor. And maybe I missed something in the policies, but it looks to me at this point as if there's no prohibition on that. Don Cook and I had a very respectful conversation about that. Um, I feel that they should be separate myself, but uh, Don didn't. And I don't, think, I don't think you are forbidden to have your teacher as a mentor. Certainly you have to work the program as intended in any case. Um, many, many organizations might have some sort of policy like that of separating roles. Um, Double check this and ask Dr. Lash, again, the director of the committee, or ask someone in education if you have any questions. The candidate is any guild member, a beginner of any age, someone who wishes to learn, someone who wants to improve. The person may or may not dream of becoming an FAGO one day. Uh, the person may or may not want to go to music school, may or may not want to be a concert organist or a performing musician. Uh, there have been people in my chapters who have been all kinds of uh, different professions, you know, and they, they do this as well. That's perfectly fine. Any kind of, any kind of motivation that gets you to learn is a good motivation. So we start at the beginning <clears throat> and no question is too simple or trivial. I can't stress that enough. Very often when we're in the intensity of a music program or the thick of intense preparations or a competition or a major concert, um, our head is there in a very, very high and difficult and rarefied place. We have to remember that for someone else, square one is a mystery. And that part of our love of what we do has to be to go back there and help someone find the way. We've got to make some room for that. We start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. And we go from there. One example I could give you would be the um, question on the exam, uh, the achievement award for the organ console, which involves looking at the nameplate of the organ. Now I remember, in fact, I'm gonna switch over to that so you see what I'm talking about. Let me screen share over to the, here we are. Question number one, find the nameplate on the organ console and identify as many of the following as possible. The builder, year of construction, opus number or model number. Explain what an opus number is. If this information is not available, then there's an alternative question tell someone about an organ builder of your choice. We all love to study little arcana like the nameplate on the organ. If you're really into this, you do love looking at the nameplate. 
We can all admit it. We all feel this way. I love it myself. I'm, I'm a geek. I admit it. And uh, that's good. I think it belongs at the beginning of an organ console award. Look at the nameplate and talk about it. Why not? That doesn't necessarily come by osmosis. When I was in the Boy Scouts, and I'm going to talk more about them later, I did canoeing merit badge at our summer camp in Massachusetts. And um, it strikes me as funny to this day. The parts of a canoe are named as if it were a big steamship from the 19th century. Why does a canoe have to have gunnels and midships in the bow and the stern? It's a canoe, but you had to memorize all those terms and you had to know that it's spelled gunwales, but pronounced gunnels or they would laugh at you. It was like you were becoming a British sailor, but it was a canoe. <laughs> you know, it's this little wonderful little boat, but uh, there's no geeky detail that you shouldn't be taught to love. And I, I stand by this idea that starting with a nameplate is a great place to start and start spreading our interest in the organ. Now, you can see some of the other questions. How many stops are represented in the stop list and how many ranks? What's the difference between a rank and a stop? A good basic question. Not everybody gets into music school absolutely clear on that point. It's really, really good to just spend time and get that sorted from the beginning. The Roman numeral means more than one rank to the stop. And we have questions about key action, what the keyboards are, et cetera, and so forth. Now I alluded earlier, here I'm gonna dip around again. I'll show my face again on the screen for a little bit. Um, I've mentioned before that I've been inspired by other organizations. I have a lot of experience. For someone who's not a joiner at all, I'm really quite a joiner. After all, I've joined a lot of things and learned a lot, gotten a lot of ideas, good things and things that I wouldn't necessarily uh, endorse. But three organizations came to my mind as I was thinking about these achievement awards. I've mentioned the Toastmasters and the Boy Scouts. And the third one is Trinity College London. I have a lot of experience with all three of these. So let me uh, go into a little more detail with these so you see where my ideas are coming from. I see a huge number of chats here. I'm going to take a moment here. Just two? Oh, I see. Screen sharing is pixelated. Oh, very sorry. Sorry, it's pixelated. I didn't intend that. I hope no one else had that experience. Let me, uh, let me go back to my PDF. I know my PowerPoint, I take it back. Resume slideshow, start at the beginning. So here, let's start with, um, well, I'll start with the Boy Scouts and dispose of that briefly. I don't have anything, uh, anything to show you on those, but while the Trinity College thing is up, I'll mention that the Boy Scouts, at least in my day, were structured around ranks, many of which were organized around merit badges, which in turn were built on top of skill awards. I actually came in with the old system, but the new skill award system came in after a year or two. One built skills to the point of a skill award. You had basic, very basic skills, let's say first aid, citizenship, camping, or cooking. And then the greater demands of the merit badges came. There were now three different kinds of citizenship badges you had to get and more elevated demands for camping and cooking. And the first aid merit badge took you into the world of the Red Cross. It became increasingly demanding, but there was a step. I think that was the same theory uh, that inspired me to have these more basic steps. I'm not saying these are skill awards in the guild, but they, they are achievement awards. They measure a certain progress. Now here we see Trinity College London, which was established in 1879. It offers certificates and diplomas under the UK system. Some of these are legally diplomas um, and degree equivalences uh, in a host of musical instruments. Um, the organ syllabus is really fascinating. You can find it online. There's the very busy um, website at the lower right, but just look, at, look up Trinity College London and you will find this. It's a really remarkable 
syllabus. It mixes electronic keyboard and traditional organ, I mean in one book, but they are separate in terms of repertoire. The organ syllabus is comprehensive, detailed, full of really good repertoire. It's worth reading just for the repertoire. And it begins with a very basic grade one, which pedals are optional, largely because many of the candidates are too small to reach the pedals still. Why should that stop someone? If you can't quite reach the pedals yet, you can still be interested in the organ. And from there, it goes all the way to fellow, as uh, Frank and I both know, a post-baccalaureate distinction in the UK. So this is one example of the sight reading parameters for the organ exam. Just look how detailed this is. Grade one through grade seven on the left, what keys could be used and asked for, and it's cumulative. So grade six, it says F sharp and C minor, but it also includes all of the keys in the lower grades. What time signatures are involved? What notes and rest values, tempi and articulation and manuals, it's an increasingly complex set of demands. And it's really, really interesting. My brain doesn't naturally work this way, but it's a really good thing to study and go through just for enlightenment and uh, illumination. And I keep thinking, wouldn't it be great if the guild eventually had this kind of, this kind of program, if we could uh, take it away from them? <laughs> to have one alongside them, as it were. Um, musical knowledge questions. Here we are. There's the initial grade, the very earliest grade um, for the uh, electronic keyboard. What they have to know. What is the pitch name for this note? And the answer could be G. Right? Note durations. Note values, a quaver. See, it uses the British terminology. That's really wonderful. My point here, what I've learned here, is incremental, incrementalism, step at a time. Here are more very, very clear standards for how something should be marked and evaluated. Really valuable stuff. I think any of us in the Guild would enjoy having a look at this stuff. Um, very helpful. This is how, how much they put into it. Um, and timings with little clock pictures in case you didn't see the number. I mean, good heavens, you know, and here's some of the repertoire. It's not all old repertoire, Alcock, Bach, Beethoven, Böhm, Boivin, Dandrieu, Frescobaldi. These are perhaps some of these are the older ones. There's a, there's a newer, more recent composers as well. But the careful attention to repertoire, here's an example of the Boivin piece. This gives you an example of what's expected at grade one. Maybe if we develop an organ repertoire exam someday, we can draw for inspiration on some of these ideas. This is really good basic repertoire. It's canonical, kind of, yeah. Some ornamentation, but not overly much ornamentation. Right? From the famous Edition Outremontaise from good old Imslip. So very thorough system. It's really inspirational. Now here's Toastmasters. They have a new program since I was involved. When we moved up state, I just, I wasn't able to go to meetings down in New Jersey anymore. Um, as I said at Organ Fest, this is the organization for you if you like earning little certificates and ribbons and plastic trophies. I won't show you a plastic trophy this time, but you can um, join this if you want small affirming rewards little prizes, and it's really done strategically and well, and it does key to a genuine achievement. We find a carefully graded system that not only requires public speaking, but taking on of many small leadership roles, both in managing a meeting and in the governance of the local club. So someone at every meeting has to count how many times you say, um. How many times have I said, um, so far? Not once. It works. <laughs> they tell you, you've said 10 ums. You really do stop. Uh, it's a, uh, and you are expected to take um, a leadership role by becoming a vice president. There are more vice presidents than you can imagine and have the experience of governing. It's a terrific antidote to another danger that organizations face, which is a closed circle of leadership.
And we can really neatly avoid that. In addition to this traditional program that I went through, um, and those books are still the ones I used, there's a new one called Pathways, and you get to choose your path. This to me is maybe not exactly like our achievement awards because these are, um, maybe, they, maybe they're similar, but they've got these catchy illustrations and they're very, very topic specific, innovative planning, engaging humor, team collaboration, and they help you with specific skills. I do really recommend Toastmasters. It's a lot of fun. So, let me go on at this point, how we use the awards. The awards can be used many ways. It can help structure your agenda as a teacher. They can help remind you of what the parameters are, what the points are we should be hitting. Um, they're also great to structure an agenda for the learning of the student and to open up aspirations. They can guide you in terms of your expectations. They're also very flexible. That can be done in any order. Excuse me, no student is like another student. Everyone is different. We're all unique. We all have a different dream and a different approach. Our brain maxes out at, at different points and we like some things more than others. And that's reality. So we can use these very flexibly to always argue for progress, but in a way that's grateful I hope, to the candidate. You can do them in any order and they're self-paced and there's no deadline. You don't have to drop that thing in the mailbox with fear and trembling by April 1st. And of course, another thing it's used to encourage camaraderie and a sense of growth in the chapter. You can have little award ceremonies as a feature of your meetings. So those things I think are, are really, really helpful. So I'm going to go back now for a moment to another thing I have, which is just to look at the guidelines that we have for the exams, these achievement awards, I mean, in general, because we have some really good guidelines. They've been, they're a little different from the way I, Don and I left them, but that's fine. These, these have to evolve and grow. So let me go back to my PDFs, and I'm going to switch over here. This should say AGO Achievement Awards, Evaluation Guidelines. And just look at these wonderful points, friendly and professional environment. Treat the matter seriously, but welcome the candidate as a colleague and as a person with dignity, perfect. Mentors should be selected or approved by the chapter board from among the more positive and welcoming chapter members. Yes, that's true. Now I see Cheryl Huber raised her hand. Uh, Cheryl, would you like to say something? Unmute and say something? How do I get, Cheryl, do you see how you can unmute at the bottom left or somewhere on your screen? No, I was ready to say something. I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. No worries. I, I, I do this Zoom constantly now for my college teaching and it's becoming a, a dear old friend. So here we go. Uh, back to the um, guidelines. During the appointment, all requirements should be completed without notes or resources of any sort. Present all of them in the order that they appear in the list of requirements. The candidate has them in advance and they're meant to guide his or her study. Do not substitute your own questions and do not make them easier or harder than they are. This is a tough one. We organists tend to be rugged individualists. Every one of us tends to be rather unique. We know that. I'm guilty too. If, if it's guilty, then I'm guilty. If it's a fact, then it's, it's a fact for me too. And it's, it's important to try to defer to the system and to work with the system and don't be a, a rogue or an activist on your own account, unless it's absolutely necessary, and it's not. Completion of a requirement means to demonstrate to the mentor's satisfaction a reasonable degree of understanding. Candidates never fail. You can defer passing until they know better, but they don't fail. You don't say you failed. I'm afraid that, you know, as far as I know, the, the big five uh, exams, there's still passing and failing. And that is life. We fail things sometimes. But um, these are not meant to be that way. These are meant to be an affirmative process. 
coaching is encouraged. For example, if the candidate wrongly identifies a crumb horn as a string, you could try to elicit the right answer by talking about the horn part of the name, etc. And then I ask to identify another rank to see if they're, how, how they're doing. Maybe they just got crumhorn wrong, right? Correct answers. There is often more than one correct solution. Words of wisdom. Don must have thought of those. Uh, concerns may be expressed and your opinions and impressions are valuable to the committee. To me, I think this is a really, really good roadmap. I am absolutely not in favor of watering down high standards. Uh, I want my certifications to be impressive. I don't want them to be you know, low. They took a lot of work and I'm, I'm in favor of that, but these have to build the right context and atmosphere and environment of support. I am reaching close to the end of my presentation and I'm hoping there will be questions, but I wanted to go back for one or two more little things. There's more chat. Oh, I'm sorry, you're, uh, someone else is having a problem reading on screen. I don't know why that is. I'm uh, just doing screen share. I thought it was like a, like a photocopy of my screen. Sorry about that. There will be a handout as, as Elizabeth says. And here's a q and A. I'll take that right now. I have five questions when there's time, David, that's fine. In just a minute, I will take your uh, questions. That will be just great. Let me just close that for the moment. Let me go back to finish my little PowerPoint deal and then we can take questions. In the future, new awards can be proposed and developed as desired. I hope we're on a, a path of um, being energetic and activist about the instrument we love and its future and really going out there and selling it to people. Existing awards can be revised. Uh, you know, um, I, I love my little baby, but <laughs> it's not mine anymore. Uh, the, the guild has to move forward and uh, take charge of this. More than one level can exist. We were talking about theory one, theory two, hymnody one, hymnody two. You could have a whole sequence if you liked. And my dream is of a full and rich system with many choices. That's the future. And I will close by coming back to my original metaphor of finding the um, Big Dipper. That's the Whirlpool Galaxy. My telescope doesn't show it nearly that nicely, but I, I've now been able to find that. And let's make this an out of the world, out of this world experience for our members. Uh, reach for the stars, aspire high. And that still has to be one step at a time. You have to, um, you have to have uh, a little helicopter or an airplane before you have a rocket ship. And we haven't gotten to warp drive yet. So I would like us to think big and think for the future and think very happily and positively. So now um, I see there are questions. Okay, um, I'm gonna take these in. Marjorie found the link to the evaluation page. All right, good for you. Um, David, if you can hear me, did you want to unmute and speak up and ask some of your questions? Do I have to hit answer live? All right, let me go to Bob first. Uh, you said, where can these new certifications be found on the AGO website? And again, that is um, back here with the AGO website. I hope you can see this clearly under education. This is a long menu across the top, this gray menu bar, but almost in the dead center, symbolically perhaps, is education. And we go down to certification uh, or up to the achievement awards. And then we can go to there. Someone wants to say something? Uh, yes, I think I'm unmuted now. This is David. Hi, David. What's up? Um, I, I hope some of these uh, sort of have a range of questions about this. I'm very excited about it. I think it looks great. And it would, as you say, give a structure to some teaching. I'm getting a little bit of feedback from you, uh, Jonathan. Oops. 
There you go. Um, first of all, um, what uh, provisions do we need to make about child safety? Um, this is something that's a concern for POEs, uh, not only a background check, but also training on uh, preventing child uh, abuse. And so I'm wondering what that stands here. Uh, getting I, feedback I made you again. Do block. That's child abuse right there. Block you. Could you all mute, please? Except David. Go ahead, David. Okay, that's question number one. Shall I take that question? Sure. I strongly agree with you. Uh, it's, a, it's absolutely necessary. Not only children, they, they're at the top of our list of concern, but any, any, any age. Um, abuse uh, and inappropriateness can happen anytime, and it's a sad fact. Um, uh, it says something in the regulations about that a parent must be present. Uh, I don't know that the regulations actually say there must be a background check, but that's a very good idea. I, I would encourage you. I don't have any position at this point, but I think you should, or the people who are hearing this, now look at this. I've just shared the screen. Mentors, if you see down the page, mentors in italics, if the candidate is a minor, a parent or guardian must be present during every contact. Um, and I think that uh, background checks are something the Guild has kind of stumbled into recently. Um, it's, it's a changing situation. We have to, uh, we have to keep adapting, but I, I encourage you to bring yeah. that forward. And those of you who are yeah. listening, yeah, go ahead. Maybe that'll be something that uh, the, the chapter would have a policy about too. Also liability, which is a related thing. Um, another thing is um, uh, there's no recommendations about adjustment for online conducting this achievement award online, which would be a concern these days. Um, I, I imagine there's can be some creative adaptation of this if you wanted to do this online. Yeah, you know, I, um, I hosted my last, um, committee meeting last November when this kind of forum was a novelty and not, and not our old friend as it is now. Um, and uh, there are new policies about taking tests remotely. That's on the certification page. And I would think that that could easily be adapted to doing this by Zoom or by Skype or by a remote means or by a continuous recording. That's always been a problem about doing a continuous recording. You don't want a discontinuous recording because that could be heavily edited. You have to have an unedited raw take. My students at NYU who are auditioning for big summer things, it takes them 11 hours because <laughs> they have to start all the way back at the beginning if they make a mistake. They can do as many tries, but it has to be one take. So that can, that's always concerned me. Some church musicians uh, go in and they, they edit the thing until it's like a CD, like it's a souvenir CD. It's, that's not what we're supposed to have. But I would say certainly uh, it should be done remotely at this time. I'm sure that, would, that could be done. And if it's not clear enough, again, someone who has the authority to do that should make sure that's clear. Go, go ahead with your other question. Okay, uh, the one, uh, another, next one has to do with the learning resources listed at the bottom of the page. So for example, I'm looking at uh, the Oregon Console. Some of those resources are not easily available to students. Uh, the Harold Gleason Method of Organ Playing, uh, 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 I don't know if you've looked at, um, on Amazon for that lately, but it's, uh, <laughs> it's like worth its weight in gold. Uh, the George Ritchie, I think too, is the same. These may be out of print or not easily available. So I'm just hoping there'll be some further examination of the resources, especially making things that are available to um, you know, students who are just starting their climb up Mount Parnassus here and are not gonna spend $500 on the, you know, a, 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 a heritage copy of Harold Gleason. Uh, so that's just a, 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 a sort of a, a, a concern about the learning resources that are listed here. I appreciate that. Um, you know, maybe maybe the days when you could get something for a, a penny plus shipping on Amazon are over and we should think about that. But you were right, the climb up Mount Parnassus is not without its costs, but we don't want to overburden students. Yeah, now on the other hand, the loophole uh, first Oregon book is an excellent resource. So, I mean, and I think it's probably more appropriate, perhaps anyway, to the age group that you're talking about, possibly, although um, even college age too. 
uh, but there might be an adult who could um, use the Harold Gleason and uh, uh, then I don't know, maybe their teacher can help them with looking at that. Uh, a related question of the resources is that, uh, how, are the, how are these achievement awards coordinated with the Committee for the New Organist and their video resources on their website? Because uh, those are some very fine videos and um, I'll cover a lot of the topics. Um, uh, I mean, you need to have a, about 20 hours to watch all of them, but uh, they, they cover about you know, all of the topics that are on your awards and, and more. Uh, and so just just another observation, you know, the coordination between this project and the Committee for the New Organist. Um, I, I don't I don't have a solution for that, but uh, it, it, it would be nice to, you know, um, cross list resources, uh, that kind of thing. And the last one is uh, the the uh, I have to look at this more carefully, but it seems that the requirements presume a certain kind of pipe organ. And so uh, uh, when it talks about where's the memory level, the general and the visual thumb pistons and toe studs, um, reversible pistons, crescendo pedals, that kind of thing, it may be that some students are not having lessons or taking lessons on an organ with those things. Yeah, I see your point. Um, the, the organ nameplate thing has an alternative. So maybe we should continue to look at alternative questions. Um, yeah, I, that's a good point. You should be in communication with uh, the powers that be because you're, these are good valid, valid points you're coming up with. Yeah, I said, um, I, I had told Elizabeth George a couple of these things when, you know, this first came out and she said she would pass some of them on. But then I, as I look at it more, I think of more things. <laughs> so. Right. Fair enough. And I'm, I'm glad. Um, Marjorie just said, uh, do not violate copyright by copying to save money. Amen, amen, amen. Very, very important not to violate copyright. And if you're on IMSLIP or Coral Public Domain Library, you know, cpdl.org, don't assume it's legal. But David, did you have anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Excellent points. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see, who else would like to say something? Bob, I think I showed you. Marjorie, you found what you needed. Who else has a question? Anybody? The Don Cook source listed on the Oregon console page. What do you mean by the Don Cook source, Claudette? Someone asked about a Don Cook source. I don't know what that means. Don Cook is the previous counselor for education. We, he and I worked on these awards together very closely. I'm comfortable with silence. Uh, Jonathan, I think Claudette has typed her, her a question in the chat, not in the Q and A. Yeah, it says, I am having difficulty finding mm -hmm. the Don Cook source listed on the Oregon console page. I'm just not entirely sure what that means. Do you have an insight into that? No, I yeah. don't. But... Claudette, if I, I see your name here, if you would like to unmute at the lower left of your screen or somewhere and... There, there, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm looking at it and I actually, let's see, uh, I'm an organ console a, a page of the AGO Achievement Award. Um, learning resources, Don Cook is the first one listed. Organ tutor, organ registration, introduction to the organ console, online tutorial available free to AGO members, visit AGO. I, I just didn't find it. Huh, that's a big thing he's developed at Brigham Young University. He's a professor of organ there. And it's huge. A uh, lot of very detailed stuff. Uh, you know, it's funny, for a declining field, we're growing like topsy. We've got all these videos and all these programs and possibilities. We've, you know, we've, we do need to fuse it all together at some point. Um, I don't know why that's not there. I really well, don't. I wish, I I. I... I hope somebody will find out why it's not there. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you. I'm a good question. I, I wish I knew. Where is Don's, where in the world is Don Cook? At the, at, under learning resources, along with the Davis, Gleason, Lupo. Right, I see that, yeah. And right. uh, I did not have trouble ordering a, a Richie Stopper book online. 
Right. But I agree it, with the loophole the first organ book also being good. Okay, good. Great. And there are some free public domain ones on Imslip. They're probably very, very old. But um, I don't know. All right. If, I'm glad it's not too expensive. Who else? Good heavens. We're up to 10 questions. We're going to run out of time in just a minute. Um, organ tu tutor organ, right? Okay. Sandra, I'm excited about this award. All ages, absolutely all ages and 59 is a good age to be. Uh, good for you. Good for you, Sandra. I hope you take these. Where exact anonymous attendee, where exact, whom exactly should uh, someone contact if they have a question about the awards? I would suggest Dr. Andre Lash, L-A-S-H, who is the uh, director of the Committee on Professional Certification. And um, either that or you could ask uh, Vince Carr, who's uh, right here, who's the counselor for education, but that may get you back to the committee involved. And you can ask any questions you want. All right, other questions, other points, other chats, other comments? Opened it right up, okay, good. You'll find his videos, look at that. Good, Elizabeth, thank you. What else is there? What else have we got? Any other questions? Anybody just wanna unmute and shout a question at me? I'm very pleased there are so many people involved. I see 36 participants. That's wonderful. I hope you're all excited about either doing these for yourself and spreading the, the joy around in your chapters and getting people excited about learning because it's a wonderful thing and we're never done learning. The day we stop learning is the day we stop existing. And that's not possible as I understand it. So anything else or shall I turn this over to Dana for some concluding remarks? Wait a second, Dave. Yes, that's right. Will the slides be available to print? Elizabeth, will the slides be available to print? Do you mean my, P my PowerPoint? I think that'll be part of the recording of this thing, but I'm willing to share it if I'm asked to. Thank you. Oh, Dina, good to see you. Thank you, I hope uh, you're welcome. All right, why don't we go over to Dana now? Thank you all very much for being a great and active audience and um, have a great um, rest of the week. Hello everyone, I'm Dana Robinson, as you can see, and I'm here to represent the Committee on Continuing Professional Education today. On behalf of the committee, I'd like to thank Jonathan for this enlightening presentation and for the wonderful dialogue that he was able to get going for some of the, with some of the participants, and also to thank each of you for your participation. There are four additional webinars in this series, and we hope that you will be able to participate in as many of them as your schedules and interests allow. The next webinar will be held next Monday, October 19th, and will be presented by Ann Laver, who will speak about improvisation for the beginning organist. We hope you'll be able to join us and look forward to seeing you then. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>